So uh, I'll just start the session off. Uh, so uh, this session is all about uh, rewarding career in health and nursing. So uh, before that, let me just, uh, we are announcing a bumper offer for people who are uh, who are putting a comment on the link, which I'll be posting on the comment session. So the first would, uh, the first winner would get five hundred dollars, and it can go up to three hundred to two fifty. And we are also giving uh, PT online and four eight five consultations. So this is something which you have to look up on to. And uh, during the session, you can uh, type in all your comments uh, in the comment session. If you have any questions, you can just type it in the comment session. And once uh, we are done with that, uh, our expert panel would be uh, giving you answers regarding that. So uh, to start off, uh, we are joined with uh, our first speaker would be Mithun, uh, Mithun Patel. Uh, he is the director of international students recruitment at Aussies Group uh, Queensland. He's having overall 20 years of experience in international student education sector. Mithun Patel is one of the most decorated uh, members of our education uh, leadership team in Aussies Group Brisbane. And uh, our second speaker uh, uh, is Mr. Mithun uh, Gururaj. Uh, he's the regional manager for the international marketing and student recruitment at Australian Catholic University. We are also joined by a student who will be sharing his, uh, his, uh, his testimony as well. So over to you, Mithun. Uh, you can start off the session. Thank you, Godwin. Thank, thanks for your warm welcome. <clears throat> it was very kind words. Uh, so I guess like, you know, um, everyone, we can just start with the, the, the uh, whole presentation is about, um, I guess, no need to mention about the sector. Uh, it's very much like, you know, talked in the last two, three years um, since the pandemic has begun. Um, we all came to know um, how the life is important and how we need to look after each other um, and our community as well. So um, we are talking about the health sector and uh, focusing towards the nursing industry, um, which is which is highly in demand at the moment. Um, but again, it's going to be like you know, in the demand for for the future years as well. So let's talk about uh, nursing and health uh, healthcare makes the largest clinical workforce in Australia, as well as like, you know, throughout um, worldwide, if we can look at uh, globally uh, in the current trend. Um, when we talk about the, the um, nursing sector, of course, we need to see that how it is regulated. Australia is the country who always like, you know, keep an eye on the regulation and uh, processes and to make sure that the uh, it the patients have been looked after really well. So care is one of the top priority in Australia's uh, values, and that's what like you know we're going to be focusing as well uh, as part of this sector. So to work as a nurse or uh, midwife in Australia, you need to have um, completed your course through the registered organisation as well, and having your uh, registration um, approved by those authorities. So who is going to approve your uh, registration uh, is the organization called APRA, and uh, APRA also manages the nursing and midwifery profession um, uh, through, through its scheme. So how will you become the registered my uh, registered um, nurse? Um, that Well, before I go on to the registered nurse, I do want to like, you know, talk about the categories that we can see um, around in our nursing sector. Um, once you finish your study, you can become an uh, enrolled nurse or you can become a registered nurse or a nurse practitioner. And what the differences are in these three categories. So uh, enrolled nurse is uh, commonly referred as EN, um, provides nursing care under the direct uh, supervision of the registered nurse. So it's kind of a junior level. Uh, you can put it in the simplified words. Um, when it goes to the registered nurse, uh, registered nurse having like you know more experience um, in, and set skills as well. Um, I would say like you know somewhere around like you know the few years of experience um, to 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 become a registered nurse, um, and they also like you know diagnose um, and assist the people uh, with their uh, chronic conditions as well. Uh, nurse practitioner, uh, we we are seeing this as a, like you know the highly 
um, highly experienced and skilled um, workforce. So let's move, move on to the next slide. So here in this slide, we are talking about like, you know, the employment and the career opportunities. If you are planning to study in this area, uh, so nursing is one of the like you know, most diverse health professions. Um, as I said before as well, uh, in recent years, uh, everyone has come across with this uh, health sector um, due to the pandemic and the COVID-19 um, impact. Um, so if you are planning to like you know, pursue your career in this um, area or planning to like you know, take the course, uh, you can become like you know specialist um, in the emergency area, pediatrics, mental health, uh, community health, alcohol and drug dependence, and the armed services. So armed services is not so much like you know talked about in the Australian like you know community, but um, my colleague, I mean my um, uh, student testimonial, like you know when we reach to that stage, we will talk more about in detail. Um, so what is the employment projection? Uh, nursing is the largest healthcare professions in Australia, uh, as I'm repeatedly like, you know, saying this. Um, and what it stands for, um, we, we talk about like, you know, the, the thousands of nurses across Australia, uh, whether it is the, the metropolitan city or a regional. Uh, regional, uh, it's so much like you know, in demand at the moment uh, because there are, there are not many like, you know, um, the, the supplies and also like, you know, um, the, the um, I would say the health support available in those areas. Um, so if you are planning to like, you know, study in, in, in the, um, the nursing courses uh, that are likely to like, you know, get, get the work in this sector. Um, if, if, if you, if, I mean, throughout Australia, but, but most likely like, you know, you can find the job easily in the remote uh, communities as well. So um, it is also in the medium to long-term um, demand list, and it is expected to significantly like, you know, grow uh, by 2025, and uh, they're expecting about 85,000 nurses to be added, um, and uh, 123,000 nurses by 2030. So that's the, like, you know, the government projection uh, that we are talking about. Um, and uh, as I said before, this demand is continuously growing um, because the the Australian uh, population is reaching to its age gap. Um, so once it's going to be like you know aging, uh, we will require like you know more nursing and health support as well from the migrants. So let's talk about the trends and affecting the workforce, um, changing population demographics the advancement in technology and innovation. Uh, we are seeing like, you know, how we are using in Australia, particularly we are using like, you know, very high tech uh, equipment um, to, to support the health sector. Um, and also um, in a nursing, there is so much like, you know, to learn and also like, you know, it's evolving uh, role, I would say. So you're always going to be like, you know, learning, learning and learning. Um, so it's, it's one of the like, you know, the highly um, uh, I would say one of the most popular, like you know, the the, the occupation to go in. Um, available courses. Um, the courses are available uh, through diploma, um, bachelor, or master, like you know, streams. And uh, we'll talk a little bit more about like you know the diploma uh, later. But um, where it is recognised, it is recognised in Queensland uh, in through Australian Catholic University. We also have a central Queensland University. Um, TAFE Queensland as well offers the uh, diploma courses and Queensford uh, College. So Australian Catholic University and CQU University, they offer um, these um, bachelor and master courses, um, which has the English in, uh, entry requirement as an overall seven in IELTS and individually seven as well. So what happens if you don't have these four? Um, you won't be able to get the admission through, um, but you can always check with us. Um, we can find the best uh, possible like you know, opportunities for you to get into the uh, nursing sector. Um, what are the academic requirements? So if you are the year 12 student, or if you have finished your bachelor degree, um, I mean, year 12 is the, like, you know, the basic minimum requirement, but if you have finished your bachelor from, from overseas as well, uh, we can always look into that as well, how we can um, get you into this sector. So Bachelor of Nursing, um, as I said before, um, any nursing course, uh, it requires the IELTS 7 each, 
um, in each component as well uh, with overall uh, seven as well. Uh, what are the intakes available? Uh, February and July 2022, uh, universities available, uh, as I said before, Australian Catholic University, uh, University of Sunshine Coast, Central Queensland University, uh, and University of Southern Queensland too. Um, and the general um, information on the, the fee structure as well, if you are wondering, uh, $15,000 per semester. Um, Master of Nursing, uh, English requirement again, seven in each in IELTS or um, here, like you know, it's a little bit different. Um, most of the universities um, do not accept PTE score. So try to like, you know, get into IELTS only um, because PTE is not recognized for the nursing. Uh, academic entry requirements, um, you must have a bachelor degree and must have completed uh, one territory course in biological science, chemistry, or physics at an undergraduate um, level. Fees, uh, we are looking at uh, 17,500 per semester, and that's an average. Um, universities have a different like you know, structure as well. Um, Intex, February 2022 and February 2023. So uh, guys, this is like you know, the one intake um, in in respective year, so you want to like you know make sure that you are ready for like you know next uh, intake. Um, universities, um, University of Queensland and QUT as well, yeah, you know, for Master of Nursing, and we can also talk about um, um, the Master of like you know possible like you know option in in the Australian Catholic University once we reach to to uh, that presentation part. So what is the employment growth expected? Um, it is expected to be increased by 15.2% um, by 2025 uh, and nursing professional employment is, is, is about to like, you know, grow. Um, job market, um, according to the, the government data, um, as I said before, like, you know, it, it has been like, you know, in demand uh, lately, uh, for sure, uh, has been like, you know, rising 50% or more um, compared to like, you know, prior to COVID time. Um, and it's it's nowadays like, you know, it's easy to like, you know, find a work in Australia um, because of the, the this shortage in the supply chain. Um, so if you want to like, you know, look for your, your um, uh, nursing career um, after your course or during your course, it could be a possibility as well. So um, again, one more time, I just want to remind everyone um, that we have the giveaways and we have the bumper contest available as well. So if you want to, if you have any questions, if you want to share your um, your comments and story, um, you could be like, you know, a winner of $500 or a 300 or a 250, um, or you could also like, you know, get the giveaways um, of the PT files and CC online coaching. You could also get the 485 visa consultation free um, in our Australian offices uh, or one time PR consultation. You could also get 50% uh, up to 50% scholarship uh, through the institutions um, that we can suggest the courses to you. So guys, uh, start putting your comments in uh, and start asking questions um, and you can be the winner. Thank you. So I'm happy to take like a few questions uh, if one has any. Um, Thanks a lot, Midun. Thanks a lot for the session. So, uh, so we have Jewel, who will be sharing his experience with us, uh, being a nursing student in Australia. Uh, over to you, Jewel. Hi, guys. Hello, everyone. Um, thank you for having me. Thank you, Goodwin. Thank you, Mithun. And thank you, Aziz, for having, giving me this opportunity. Um, yeah, I am a nursing student. I came to Australia in 2017 um, to start Diploma of Nursing um, did for two years, then went into, I was so passionate about nursing that I went into Bachelors of Nursing started that in 2019, and I recently finished in this November 2021. So yeah, it has been a big journey for me. A um, lot of new things that I have learned um, and a lot of experiences. It's full of experiences. Um, can you, yeah. Can you share your experience as well, Drupal? Uh, because I'm sure like an audience would be like, you know, uh, keen to hear your, your real experience. Yes, yes, yes. So one of the best part about the nursing degrees that I like the most is placements. Um, I'm sure Mithun from ACU would go um, over that in later stage as well. But placements are one of the important things that we 
you get in the nursing degree. Um, placements are like specific blocks where we actually go into the hospitals and work with the workforce. So we work with the experienced nurses on the boards, hands-on skills. Um, and that's usually at every semester. Um, so every semester, you, depending upon what units you do, you actually go into, let's say if you're doing a mental health unit in nursing, then you go into a mental health place, um, mental health ward, which would be probably, I would say, acute mental health or mental health rehab. If you are doing any surgical units, then you would go into operating theaters and learn more about that. So it's basically what I like about nursing in Australia is um, you learn something into the uni in the course. Um, you go to classes, you learn something, and then you also have the opportunity to go into the field while you are studying and have that opportunity, that safe learning environment where nurses or actual workforce can guide you on how you are uh, you know how you are doing and you can practice those skills that you learn usually not other a lot of other occupations or courses don't offer that like I know engineering you just study and then you go straight into workforce or, or you may have some projects or anything on the way but in nursing it's kind of like the part of the course so you study in the class you go into the um, into the hospital you practice those skills you master those skills so you are I would say ready to go and work when you finish your course. So that's one of the best things that I like about nursing. Um, and anyone who is, um, I know a lot of people now from other backgrounds are also like, you know, trying to get into nursing. Um, a lot of factors affect that, like good career profile, good career growth chances, financial reward, financial rewarding career as well. And not, I don't forget to mention PR per perspective as well. Um, but um, I think, um, if you are thinking to do nursing, it's one of the best decisions you would take because I myself um, wanted to do nurse um, engineering after my year 12. But I thought, let me get into diploma of nursing because there was, um, you know, a hype of that as well. So I went into diploma of nursing. I, I liked it. And then I eventually continued into bachelor's of nursing as well. So that's a bit about my journey. And um, not to... I. Uh, I would also mention that all my education process, my student visa and everything handled by Aussies, um, India and Aussies here in Melbourne. I'm based in Melbourne. So um, the staff is fantastic. Anyone who has any queries about like, you know, getting admission into nursing, definitely go to the nearest office and the team there would be able to help you. Thank you very much. Uh Thanks a lot, Drewel. Thanks for sharing your experience with us. Uh, I hope people who are watching would be excited to hear what you said. So uh, if you have any questions, uh, people who are watching, please do uh, please do write it on our comment session so that our expert panel can uh, advise you regarding that. So uh, over to you, uh, Mithun Gajja, so uh, you can start off with your session. There are two Mithun. Thanks, God. Yeah, there are two Mithun, so it's it's a bit <laughs> bit confusing. So Mithun, yeah. it's your session now. Okay. No, thank you. I'm God. sorry about that. Two Mithuns, uh, so it's it's yeah, a bit I, confusing. <laughs> I usually look over my shoulder when someone says Mithun. <laughs> um, uh, thanks, Mithun. Thanks, uh, uh, Gordon. And great great chat by uh, Thruvel. I think um, is is he still on there? I mean, I want to ask him a question. How has how has pandemic affected a student? I would like to hear from him if he's still there. If he's not there, probably. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Uh, if you're in, can you can you share your experience with Mithun? Mithun yeah, Gurra, um, sorry. Actually, um, thank you for the question, Mithun. It's actually um, while I was studying, I had experienced the pandemic. So I finished my diploma in 2019. So during those placements, it was a lot easier. Like everyone was, you know, like easy going on the wards. But compared to pandemic, um, it, it has actually put a lot of stress. And I think it's a good in a good way for me as well, because it's like, you know, I got to learn a lot of new things, which I would not have learned if it weren't took for like it, it was not a pandemic. Because I remember like all my last two years of placements, I have always been in probably a ward or a hospital which has a COVID ward. And uh, like we usually get rotations. So it it has been really rewarding to me in a sense that I learned a lot more skills. Uh, but then at the same time, it has been very tough as well because I actually am currently working in an aged care and we also have COVID there. So 
working in all the PPE and everything, it's very hard. <laughs> that's, that's a great point. You know, I want to ask you, what's a typical day? When does it start and when does it finish? Just for the students, I thought it's a good idea if you mentioned because nursing is, is not just a program. I thought I'll let everyone know. Nursing is a way of life. Nursing yeah. Choice you do. To, nursing is something you take up and you stick with it till you, till you, till you, you know, retire or yeah. till you decide to move and not be a nurse. It's a way of life. There's a certain yeah. life. What is your typical day, Rural? So um, it's it's a shift work. So it's usually if it's a morning shift, then I would get up by five um, and then go be on the board on the floor at seven o'clock. At seven, we usually have handovers. So handover is basically the night staff finishing up and saying whatever the progress of the patients are, how they are doing, and if there is anything specific, like if someone is going for X-ray or if someone is going for an operation or something, then that gets handed over. And then I spend around, like it's my personal thing, that I spend around 15 minutes planning my shift. I know it's only eight hours of, of the shift, but it's still like I, I invested 15 minutes of time in my plan. So I know that, okay, this is going to happen at this time. Then I can keep up again. Like I can run before the clock. Correct. Because in nursing, it's all like, you know, it's really busy, especially in these times. It's really hard because uh, most people are short staffed because let's say someone got exposed to COVID and then they have to isolate. So it's very hard. But then um, after I do my planning, I usually um, see, check on my patients, how they are doing, um, and then start with the showers and giving the daily care. Um, and if there is anyone who is very unwell, then um, if there are any specific procedures that I need to do, then I do that. Um, around in the afternoon, um, every like by the time of lunch, by lunchtime or let's say 10 o'clock everyone is ready everyone is had the shower they're relaxing in the room because they are there for like you know healing or they are there to get better so they need a good environment correct so I basically yeah make them feel fresh then i we have also have a lot of paperwork and assessments to do in terms of like legal requirements or taking care of them so after around 10 o'clock i start my assessments um, and we usually have depending upon what hospital you go um, you usually have like five to six patients so um, I do my assessments and I finish up around 12 o'clock 12 o'clock I go on my breaks um, come back from break around 12 30 and then around 12 30 I give them their afternoon tablets or medication round um, so that runs around 1 15 120 um, or after that time, if there is anything urgent or if there is an emergency, then I, I that's like the reserve time, 1.15 to 2.15. And then um, I do my paperwork, documentation and everything for the assessments that I did earlier. And after that, it's like basically two, around 2 o'clock, we give the handover to the afternoon staff and that's the end of the shift. Right. Yeah. But How would you fit in your classes if you had classes on? When would they happen if you had to attend a, a lecture would that happen mm -hmm. around the time or would it be well, in yeah. terms of like in, in at the uni when I was in because I finished uni so no stress about the classes but when I had uni um, usually when the placements only happen when you don't have classes so in the trimester system we have like eight weeks of studies eight to ten weeks of study and then we have like a bit of break in between the exams and the study Right. So depending on what you need you do, they, they take care of your timetable accordingly. So that's all done by the uni. So I usually don't have any classes at the same time I have uh, placements. But assignments, uh, yes, I do have some, like I had some assignments. So I had to manage it. Like, you know, if it's a morning shift, then I had to come back and focus on the assignments and all that. But overall, um, it is... I would say it's a bit hard in terms of managing the time, but it, let's say if time management is your um, good area, then I don't think you will be you will have any issues. And frankly speaking, when I came into nursing, I had no idea. I come from India, and in India, it's looked upon like male nurses. It's looked upon like you know, males would prefer to be a doctor rather than going into nursing. So I had that mindset in while India, and. It's, and that actually turned out to be otherwise in here because in here you get a lot of preferences as well because you're a male nurse and there is um, I would say a shortage in the workforce so let's say if you're a male and you're look, getting um, looking into getting into nursing it's go for it yeah 
Wow, yeah. Jerome, thank you. I, I I wanted everyone, all the students to understand that nursing is a way of life. This really is a, yeah. uh, the job really takes over a, a major portion of your of your day and yeah. you know, pretty much you're out there for, for the... Yeah, and it's actually, it's way of life in a way that you have those relationships with your patients as well. Um, it's like, it's not just that you are going, let's say, customer service. Like, let's say there are two types of customer service people. One person would give their heart out like bartender. You know, there are some amazing bartenders and some of them just pour out drinks. So it's up to you what you become. But there is a big opportunity of building relationships. I have a lot of uh, my friends and I know like in aged care, um, there is not a lot of patients change. So I have amazing relationship with the residents there and it's like a big family. Okay, okay I would say. Wonderful. Yeah, Drew, look, thanks for your time. Um, I think uh, that gives an insight to, to I think the students, if there are students watching, um, yeah. to understand what's a day like as a yeah. nurse. And very good point that you mentioned about the cultural barriers. You come from a country where, you know, male nurses probably look down upon you and they don't yeah. exist. 95% of Indian nurses are probably female. Yeah. Uh, whereas here there's a clear balance. Oh, it's, it's still a, 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 an industry uh, dominated by women workers, but yeah. then there's also a large chunk of male nurses. Yeah. That balances here. So if you. And really it's not just yeah. the typical nursing, as Mithun, um, Mithun Patel said before, like there's a lot of opportunities. I was amazed to see how many, like you can be a cardiac nurse, you can go into emergency, you can go into urology, you can even go into, like I said, ICU operation theaters. Even within operation theaters, you can go for like a lot of specialities. Back in India, when I, I thought I'll go into nursing, I thought, okay, nursing is just one word. But now I can say that it's a big umbrella term and there are lots and lots of opportunities under there. Yeah. Like you wouldn't have a shortage of, okay, where to next? Because there are some careers where you would feel that, okay, where to next? I have already achieved the best. But if you think you have achieved the best in one sector, let's say you are amazing cardiac nurse, you can anytime move into, let's say, orthopedic nurse. And that would be a whole new area for you. A lot of learning, a lot of different things. Right. That's that's wonderful. So, what future looks now? Is 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 Melbourne it, or, or are you looking at, at looking at other cities as well? Um, um, I'm I think because I had one of my placements in regional areas. Um, it was just around like 100 kilometers north of Melbourne, and I loved it. Um, it was in Kyneton. If anyone knows from the audience, they can relate more. Um, Kyneton District Health, and I had like it was one four weeks of placement, but I think it was too short of a time for me to spend there. Because I, I think I'll probably move eventually to regional areas. I'm not sure, but yeah. But get my experience here first. Get everything sorted. Like have enough experience that I can work independently. Because in nursing, there are a lot of decisions that you have to make in terms of care that you give. So first, get that experience, and then probably move to some regional areas. Do my masters, and then go to regional areas. Yeah, great, great, great chat. Thanks, Drewel, uh, for your time. I wanted to, you know, just just bring that the whole day yeah. type of a nurse out so that at least gives puts things in perspective for the audience as well. And what are the yeah, get in? definitely, uh, definitely. That's really good insight, Drewel. Thank you once again. I I will move on to a presentation that I have. Yep. Uh, I think that what you've just said probably leads well into what I'm going to say next. So. Um, yeah. Well, once again, thanks for joining. Uh, I'm going to start off my presentation, uh, Godwin. And you can see if you're there. Uh, yep. Yep. Start with yeah, the and yeah, well, we'll go from there. Um, are there any questions erupting? Yeah, not yet. There are no questions. Oh, uh, there are no questions yet. So I'm just... no, no questions is good. Uh, so questions we that. move on. I can share my screen, I think. And so so actually, Drubal took us through the entire life experience of a nurse from 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 the day one from Australia to the time he got a job and how his experience was. That was really amazing to hear. Yeah. Uh, you know, you don't see that in most of the professions. And, and it's, it, it was good to understand a day in the life of a nurse because what, what are their challenges? What do they expect? I mean, also to understand if they were students who have to move from their, say, doing placements, they're doing classrooms, they're running around for like extra work that they're doing. It's it's a, it's important to understand because as you rightly mentioned, time management is the key. If students from India or any other culture, they come in and expect 
a very relaxed lifestyle. They're not going to get that with nursing. It's again, have to be really up and ready from day one. Um, and that's what we say at the University as well. That, that if, you're, if you're getting into nursing, you know, be ready. It's going to, you're going to hit, hit it hard. You're going to hit the ball really hard. Uh, and time management is the key. So I think, I think that's, that's really the essence of it. All right. So uh, I'll, uh, I'll be posting a link for our uh, Facebook review. So you can click on the link, audience who are watching. And uh, so over to you, Mithun Guraj. You can start off your session. I'm just sharing my screen. Uh, yeah. And uh, that was, yeah. uh, Jua, if you can turn off your camera, that'd be great. See my screen. Well, then just give me a thumbs up if you can see my screen. Good, I can see your screen, which is that you got to. Is the presentation? Yeah, the presentation is up. Yeah, it's all good to go. It's on the full screen, right? Yes, Perfect. all Thanks. good to go. Thank you. All right, guys, uh, thanks for all joining. I can see the numbers are pretty healthy. It's, uh, um, this is an overview on the health programs and career pathways. Um, uh, thanks to the Aussies Education Summit. This is the first of my, the kind that Aussies is doing with ATU, and, and I'm glad that we've, we've joined hands with Aussies. Uh, the relationship is not, not very uh, old. We have uh, Aussies is a new partner. We've signed up in 2021 and brought them into the ACU family. Uh, of global agents, um, and we've been very excited to, to work with Aussies, and this is a right step in the right direction um, to do an event like this, so that you know we we reach reach out together uh, to the international students across across Australia. If, if you're tuning in from across the world, welcome. Um, uh, again, my name is Mithun Gururaj. I'm the regional manager uh, for the international marketing and student recruitment here at the Australian Catholic University. I'm based here on the Brisbane campus. If you're seeing that screen, um, the the uh, campus map that is the Brisbane campus. But again. I'll walk you through ACU transcends across many other cities and campuses. Uh, so it's, we're not just in Brisbane. Uh, uh, I just like that image of Brisbane. It looks really nice and beautiful shot. So I thought I'd put it up there to give you an idea uh, where where we are. I'm going to take this a little further. I'm not going to stop just at nursing. I know this is a nursing program, but there are other avenues of health that students can explore as well, which usually goes uh, sort of uh, takes a backseat, especially because nursing is such a popular program in terms of its outcome, in terms of its career guidance, in terms of the support there is, in terms of income, and in terms of job opportunities, in terms of government support. Um, nursing is just out there, uh, really a spearheading, heading, you know, being the flag bearer for health programs. But there are other courses that I would like to highlight as well, uh, which which sort of like a public health program that I'm not going to too deep into it, but at least just open your open your open your minds towards it so that uh, if you don't think nursing is the way to do it, you can also look at other avenues or other areas that you can explore your career in. Before we start, uh, I've got a small video. I hope I can share the audio. Let's just uh, see my audio. Sure. Give you an idea of all the campuses uh, in one go, but I thought just to bring up a history, ACU is one of the first education providers in Australia. We are the largest Catholic university in the English speaking. Our history dates back to 1857. 
um, and we've just hit 30 in 2020. We are in the 32nd year of the university operations, and we've established ourselves as a research intense university um, with our high rankings in, in the university's research uh, executive ranking. So ASU's done really well, and we are you know, one of the fastest growing universities in Australia. You'll notice that ACU is, is synonymous to the whole word nursing. You know, we are the flag bearers. We are the, you know, we are we have been absolutely the leaders and champions in 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 training and bringing out some of the most quality nurses in Australia over the last many many years. Um, it, just about a few years ago, we had a, a statistic and uh, well, uh, 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 something to relate to that uh, one in three nurses actually in Australia would come out of ACU and that was something that we're really proud of ourselves and that's the biggest program we offer. We do offer many other courses, but really nursing, you know, takes uh, probably the biggest course that the university has to offer. Uh, now, you might ask, why ACU? There's so many other universities offering the nursing program. What is it that ACU has to offer? Number one, we are a highly ranked university. We are the top 2% universities in the world. We have been recognized by the Times Higher Education Rankings, we are by the uh, QS World Rankings by the US uh, News Best Global Universities Rankings and the academic rankings of uh, world universities. That's a very popular uh, uh, benchmark as well for and the university has has you know has gained that ranking uh, from all these ranking bodies. Um, and we are we are always constantly working on it. We're in the top 250 universities in the world. You'd love to crash into the top 200 and eventually maybe in the top 100, which are hopefully in the next five, five to 10 years. So. Well, with, the, with the way, with the speed at which ACU has been climbing up the rankings, um, I don't think that day is too far where ACU will be uh, up there. Now, uh, a highly ranked university normally would mean an expensive university. That's what we have seen across Australia. Uh, a lot of universities, they, they capitalize on the rankings. They, you know, they, they monetize their rankings. Uh, and students, when they join a university because it's a highly ranked university, they also have to end up paying a high tuition fee. Very different with ACU. ACU is an affordable university, and and our fees has not transpired with the with the rise in our uh, uh, with the rise in rankings, and we've always tried to keep that balance uh, very clear. We've let our rankings go um, uh, touch the roof, and, uh, and but the fee is very very affordable, um, and the university works to make the education very very affordable. Maybe it's the it's the it's the mission. Maybe it's the Catholic way of doing things, but I guess. It's all about making education more accessible to people from all sections of the society. It doesn't really matter whether they're rich or they're poor. Um, student education should be accessible. So uh, there are scholarships that we offer to students, but uh, we we look at students' quality by by the results that they get. And once they have high results and they've done really well in the previous studies, they want to come to ACU. Uh, they get uh, uh, they get gifted with affordable tuition fees, and and that's something that. That both the students and their, and their family can can afford and, and probably can uh, can live with. Uh, so that's the sort of uh, education that the university is trying to. Um, uh, that's the sort of message the university is trying to you know, uh, invite within the students as well. That we are a highly ranked university, but also a very affordable university. To the factor or the third factor that I would like, really like you to understand is the work ready skills. Dhruval spoke about um, the placements. Uh, he also spoke about. Um, what happens, you know, uh, in a classroom and get out for placements, and, and that's that's a true thing, and that's not just for nursing at ACU. That's for across all the courses that we offer. Um, that doesn't matter whether you're doing IT or business or nursing or physiotherapy or psychology, uh, public health, biomedical sciences. No matter what course you're doing, um, you there is work integrated learning, there is volunteer experience programs, there's community engagement opportunity. That's 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 snuck into the course. Um, previously, it used to be. After the program, sometimes it used to be during the summer break. Now it's part of the curriculum. The students are expected to take up those internships and, and uh, experience programs, community engagement programs, because only then we think students are able to actually go to get themselves a job. And that makes a big difference because we've, we've given them the confidence, you know, they, they're able to go work for the company of their choice or they apply for a couple of the jobs and then showcase the three, four months of experience they've had the confidence that. When uh, when the question is asked to the student, well, have you got any experience? Well, how do you get experience when you're studying? You know, um, and how can you study when you're changing experience? So it's a it's a bit of a the cat on the wall question, um, and and ACU is sort of very smartly answered it by by integrating the work experience within the program. So that makes things um, uh, that makes things much more easier for students in the long run. Um, global networks is is another important factor for international students. Um, uh, we have linkages with over 200 institutions across 40 countries around the world. 
as part of our program, students can also do study abroad. They can they can come over from from, for example, say India or or from any of the other countries uh, where we recruit from. Students can come and stu study a semester here. At the completion of the semester, they can choose to go to our partner institutions across the world um, and do like a semester uh, or a few weeks of study abroad or a semester abroad or a year abroad um, as, as part of the student exchange program, as part of the study abroad program. Uh, and that's an amazing opportunity students have because they're not just getting the Aussie experience and lifestyle and understanding of the culture in Australia. They're also stepping out out uh, in the in the open in another country, maybe US or, or in, in, in Canada or Africa or or you know, European other countries, or maybe in Asia, you know, it gets experience in Asia as part of institutions um, and get that other flavor added to your to your experience at uh, Arsenal as well. Uh, so that is something that ACU thrives to uh, to achieve for the students. Obviously, life after ACU is going into the pool of this large alumni that we have. We have a large alumni, 100,000 graduates who are working in different aspects. They're in health, they're in media, they're, in law, they're lawyers, business magnets, uh, they're in education, teachers, you know, they've moved on and become psychologists and, and whatnot. So there are, there are some really good um, uh, ACU graduates out there doing the good for the community. And that's that's the. That's the uh, uh, that's the uh, echelon of the society that you will be joining who are actually, you know, turning the wheels of the of the country each day um, in, in their facets. Uh, study anywhere and everywhere is another beautiful, you know, um, simile that we use. Uh, because ACU is a national university, we've got campuses across Australia. Um, the students are, are well within their uh, rights and preferences to choose a university or a campus in the city of their choice. Um, I, in my next slide, I'll tell you where we are. Uh, but most of the Eastern Seaboard is covered with the major cities. Uh, students can study in, in any of the major states, um, and, and that's something that they could do. They could also transfer seamlessly between one campus to the other, subject to the course being available and some seats being available for that program. So if students want to move from, say, Sydney to Melbourne to Brisbane or, or vice versa, they are able to do that um, seamlessly because it's it's one big university and not uh, run by external parties. So, so that's um that's a quick overview I wanted to give the uh, give the students before I jump into you know in, um, advising about what courses we have, what scholarships we have. I thought let's get the university facts right first so that you know where you're getting in and what you. Uh, we have eight campuses across Australia and the campus in Rome, Italy. That's our transnational campus, international campus. Uh, and, and each one is unique. Um, each one is unique in their own uh, presentation. Each one is very dynamic um, in their own outlook. Um, obviously, we are very inviting and inspiring places, uh, places to learn. But remember, they're ACU at heart. You might be in a different city. You might be looking at a very different looking building, um, but be getting a very different experience outside the campus. But the moment you come inside, it's the it's the, the Australian Catholic University. It's the culture of the ACU. It's that nurturing culture. It's that culture that you know invites students, inspires our leaders, and you know everyone wants to you know do a good job. Everyone wants to have a great outcome at the end of the day. I'm currently in Brisbane. This is the home campus for me. Uh, but I've got we also got campuses in in North Sydney, Blacktown, and Strathfield. So Sydney is lucky to have three ACU campuses across the city. So that they're they're pretty much covered. The eastern, western, and the end of central Sydney. Um, we also have a wonderful campus in Canberra, one of the fastest growing campuses um, of the universities in Canberra right now is ACU. Um, it is it is you know now rivaling some of our main bigger campuses for for attracting international students and and why not? Canberra has become so popular in the last uh, five or ten years, so students are choosing Canberra for a reason. Um, uh, an excellent campus in Melbourne. Uh, which is our other bigger campus. We've got close to 12,000 students in Melbourne. One of my favorite campuses as well, both in terms of the location, in terms of culture, in terms of what it offers to students, the value, um, and the whole vibe of the university within, within AC Melbourne is, is spectacular. Um, Ballarat is uh, two hours away from our Melbourne campus, um, regional Victoria, but another beautiful campus in a beautiful city, a lot of history, uh, uh, a lot of Australian history, and a lot of Aussie locals living in Ballarat, so students could be looking into wanting to study in Ballarat as well. We do have a campus in Adelaide, but it's not open for international students. So sorry about that. Not yet, though. Hopefully, in the near future, we will have Adelaide covered and maybe start accepting international students. That's not the state. Um, if you were to study English, it has to be in Brisbane, Sydney, or Melbourne campuses only in the North Sydney or Melbourne. Um, um, and, and, and you can choose to study any other campus, just that English needs to be done in those campuses. 
Um, at this stage, English can be done if you have to study English to improve your skills. It can be done online if you're offshore, or if you're overseas, it can still be done online um, because we have, while the borders are fully open, you know, students are finding it, you know, um, tricky to get those, get the right flights and get to Australia. Uh, so, so things will improve in the next few months and watch the space. I think students will be, will be able to, you know, start flying in um, shortly in larger numbers. Uh, well, they're already doing it, but I think it's happening much, much better in the future. That gives an overview of the campuses. So ACU is not just in one city, across all campuses. If someone's asking me a question, which is my main campus? My answer has to be, I don't know. Um, all the campuses are important. All the campuses are exactly the same, unique. Um, they have their own uh, offering towards ACU. Um, North Sydney, Blacktown, Strathfield makes Sydney the biggest center. So I would like to tempted to say that Sydney is our main campus, but hey, Melbourne hosts some of the largest number of students and some of the international students. So I would say Melbourne's uh, our main campus, uh, but I'm talking to you from the largest campus by physical size. So Brisbane's the largest space, or over 100 hectares of campus here with some free parking on Brisbane campus. So I'd like to say Brisbane's the main campus. Again, it's it, it doesn't the numbers or 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 these the, the size doesn't matter. It is at the university. We are one university, and it doesn't matter where you study. You study at the main campus. So the, so, so the experience is, is sort of very similar when you study across campuses. Um, just some numbers, we've got 27,000 undergraduate students um, studying with us, close to 7,000 postgraduate students. There are no award or non-award students, about 1,400. We're close to 5,000 international students with us. And, and that slide needs to be updated. We have over students from over 100 countries, nationalities studying with us. Top origins are all clearly from Nepal, China, India, Vietnam, USA. You'll see a lot of American students on exchange studying at the university. So that's an interesting uh, interesting trend we have seen over the last few years. Not over the last couple of years because it's been awkward, the borders were closed, so students could not come in. Um, but we will also see a lot of uh, students from Africa, from Southeast Asia, um, very integral, very uh, very multicultural and multidimensional university, uh, ACU. So you will probably not just be sitting with students of one nationality, but across the nationalities and a lot of domestic students. Remember, with all these numbers, we only, uh, uh, ACU only has 13% international students. Um, expected to grow hopefully by 20% in the next few years. Uh, but as I said, that means you have an amazing opportunity of integrating um, and, and learning so much more with the local Australian students, which is 85 to 90% of the university. So that's that's an opportunity. You can see enrollments by campus. Each campus is, no one campus is really ruling the roost here. Um, very well spread out. You know, you've got thousands of students across across all the campuses. Um, totaling to about 30, 35,000 students, and this slide will be updated so we know in the next couple of months, uh, which is our main, you know, sort of the campus, if I can, if I can use the word. Uh, but just gives you an idea of what, what the university is and where. where. Um, <clears throat> we are in the top 2% universities I mentioned verbally before. We have been ranked in the top 50 global young universities, uh, fourth in sports science in Australia, 22nd globally, so that's, that's the latest update we've received. 18th in the world for nursing, 7th in Australia. So that's going to be um, a major, major thing. So remember, uh, when we say 7th, uh, uh, this, uh, this comes as, as so many other universities are offering the course as well. For a very, very long time, ACU was probably the only university doing the nursing program in such large numbers. We are still the largest nursing offering university in Australia. We still running the largest program in terms of international students and domestic students. We still have the most number of students studying nursing at the ACU. That is, in that channel, I think, yes, still number one. When it comes to, I think, academic rankings and placements, I think every university has really upped their game and everyone's trying to promote the nursing program, uh, which is where ACU was 18th in the world and 17th in Australia. And we are in the top 200 universities in the world for law. So while the university is in the top 250 universities overall, for law, we've crashed through the top 200 rankings in the world already, and that's that's a great uh, uh, elite group to be part of because law is done by every country and every country in the world. So to be in the top 200 in the world is, is great. Uh, most stats, as I said, we are the number one um, uh, largest provider for graduate teachers. Nurses, Australia, top three in graduate employment. Um, top five in skills development, top 10 in employer satisfaction, and in overall satisfaction. That's very, very important. Students need to be satisfied overall whether they like the university or not. Um, and five stars for full-time employment, 
overall experience, learning engagement, and skills development. So ACU has worked a lot in terms of you know uh, upping the soft skills of of, of students when they're studying with us. ET in the world uh, in Asia Pacific. Um, Genba universities, top ten Catholic universities, and and top. Several of those areas that we've we've really done well in. So the rankings are are a constant change, and and they're changing so rapidly. Um, so we keep updating these slides every now and then, um, so that students exactly know what what's going on. You can also jump online and find all the latest rankings and reputations that ATU has achieved in the last twelve months, and that's updated quite regularly as well. I know you're all uh, wanting to know a bit more about nursing program, which I will get to in a second. Um, I just want to touch base on the scholarships available. If you're applying for nursing or any other program at the university, remember you could apply also for the International Student Scholarship. This is available as uh, a merit scholarship for 20 international students each year, and the value of the scholarship is 50%. The 50% scholarship is a flat 50%, so it's, it, and it's not just for one semester, it's actually for the entire duration of your program. So students, when they uh, when they get the ISS, it will be a 50% overall scholarship discount across there. I don't want to call the use the word discount because that sounds very retail, um, and we are not in the retail business. This is a university, you know, dispensing education. Um, so I really like to say the students who get the scholarships of scholars and scholarship awardees, they get a 50% scholarship for their hard work in the previous studies. Um, and we've got two rounds of scholarship. One is in in main round is in September for the February intake. And then there's another one in April, May or June for the July intake. The upcoming one will be for the July intake, which will happen sometime in April. If you're looking to study in July 2022. We also have the Global Excellence Scholarship, not relevant, the scholarship for the nursing program, because that's only for undergraduate, postgraduate business and IT students. It's a $5,000 scholarship we give for students wanting to study a business IT program. But if you're looking at nursing or any other health programs, you know, the one on the left of your screen, the ISS is the most relevant scholarship. Uh, if you're a medical student, You've achieved really high academic results previously. You could get up to fifty. There are several other scholarships. These are external scholarships. I thought I should just quickly mention. Um, we've got the ACU um, uh, outside ACU scholarships. It's going to be offsite scholarships, the Australian Government Award scholarships, the Endeavour scholarships, um, the private company scholarships, international foundations, local government. You know, explore some scholarships that might be available from your country. Uh, if they have any, any direct uh, pact with, with Australia, or if the university of your choice has a has some sort of an agreement or understanding with, with, with the state government or our federal system in your country, uh, that's something that you can explore. Uh, uh, there are several other foundations available. There is the Australian and Australian Awards Scholarship. So you'll have to go on to their external websites to, to read and, and understand if you can get those scholarships. And if you do, there'll be fully paid scholarships and then it's it's it really makes the experience absolutely. I know we are again, I keep repeating myself, we are in the nursing and health uh, program, but I wanted to sneak in the slide just to let you know that within the four faculties of ASU, the four faculties we have is Faculty of Health Sciences, Faculty of Law Business, uh, Faculty of uh, Education Arts, and Faculty of Theology and Philosophy. So the four faculties we have, uh, we, uh, uh, we have several other, other discipline areas that we do, and within those discipline areas, we have hundreds and hundreds of courses that we offer. You look at these discipline areas right there, um, and we'll be focusing on the allied health in the nursing program. And I've got a couple of other areas of, uh, of health related courses which fall under the Faculty of Health Sciences that I wanted to you know, touch base on. So you can see there's early education, there's humanities, IT, law, uh, uh, sports and exercise science, teaching and education, theology and philosophy. So a whole area of courses are available depending on what you want to do with your career. Now, remember, if you're choosing nursing with a conscious decision and some feedback from your family, friends who have done it before, or you really want to be a nurse, um, that's been your calling since you probably graduated previously, or that's something that you really want to take up a career in. Um, yes, absolutely do that. But if you are doing it in peer pressure and if you're doing it for, for someone's told you to do it, I would, I would say look out for other areas that are available that might suit you more or interest you more. Uh, because why I say that, Australia really needs nurses and nurses who are able to and capable to to hit the ground running when you complete your degree and get your registration as a nurse um, because any shortfall of nurses is just time time you know, spent but not used and utilized so if you really want to be a nurse you know make uh, do the best for the course do do it 
and then you complete it, you know, actually curious at least enough so that your 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 skills have been utilized in the study that you are about allied health for a second. Um, it is allied health practitioners help us uh, live life to the fullest. Clearly, they they help us diagnose, uh, treat, and rehabilitate patients, and help improve their quality of life. There are a whole array of courses in allied health we follow. Health uh, courses uh, fall under human services, occupational therapy, physiotherapy, uh, speech pathology. So, if you are wanting to uh, end social work, obviously, if you are wanting to become an allied health professional, remember these are the courses. These professions work really closely with the nurses and doctors in hospitals. Uh, any feedback from doctors and nurses? Uh, well, the work of doctors and nurses is immediate care and you know, looking after the patient immediately to make sure they go from, you know, uh, they go from being sick to being you know, well um, in a few days or a few weeks or a few months time. So once they are, they are ready to, to you know, um, have a normal life back, they might be, you know, uh, uh, referred to allied health. They might be saying, well, you, you just fractured your leg. You know, you might need assistance from a physiotherapist. So still health, but you're not obviously nurses, but you are uh, more of a health professional working in, in physiotherapy or, or an occupational therapist or a speech pathologist. All these are very, very integrated allied health courses and areas that you could consider a career in, uh, and you can do them through undergraduate programs. You can even expand your horizons by taking up a master's course, could be a grad dip in rehabilitation or a master's of rehabilitation, or it could be master's of social work. So those are the areas that you could consider uh, as you go forward in, in a health and an allied health setting. So if it's, it's not just nursing that you're after, but you're also after something more than that, then yet explore the options of allied health. But nursing obviously is the, is, it takes the cherry. It is the biggest program that AC offers. It's probably the biggest program that some of the many other universities in Australia offer. Uh, Mithun Patel was right. The amount of opportunity for nurses across Australia is tremendous. It is a, it's a vast opportunity for international students to, to come and fill the gap of in the, in the requirement of nurses across across the country. Um, the statistic where I read somewhere that Australia each year requires at least 10,000 nurses to, to, you know, to graduate, come out and, and you know, be, be ready to you know, take over jobs. Again, it's a 24 hour industry. You know, any industry that's got 24 hours, um, um, 24 hours in a day where they need staff at least on three or four shifts basis, you have a big turn turnaround of staff that, that needs to come in and go, uh, which is why nursing has been one biggest programs and, and the government spending on health in Australia is close to 40% of their of their budget. So that's that's another factor that the quality is top notch. The the services are, are fantastic. Um, the uh, employment employee opportunities, employee benefits and employee workplace is also really, really wonderful. And you, you get so many benefits uh, for, for being with us and, and work in a really clean and safe environment as well in a hospital. So or a healthcare center. So it, it has become an employer of choice for, for many, many, many recent graduates. Um, as I mentioned, your, your career in nursing means a career in helping others and, uh, and the little blurb on the screen, is, it makes perfect sense. You'll have the knowledge, skills and attitude to improve people's well-being and there's, there is to provide vital care when they need it the most. And I can't say any more than that. I, that's the best summary about nursing program. Now, caring for others, obviously, what does it come at? It comes in packages of a few programs. You could do a Bachelor of Nursing program, or you could do a Diploma of Nursing program like, like I think Drubal did. He did a Diploma first leading up to a Bachelor's degree. That is very similar to what you can do. You can do a Diploma of Health Science of Health, a Diploma of Nursing program slash enrolled nursing. Uh, when you complete it, you could become an enrolled nurse, which means you only have to do another two years of Bachelor's of Nursing enrolled nursing program, because we do recognize the Diploma, which is completed in Australia in the nursing capacity. Uh, so if you do it that way, then you still will probably overall spend three and a half years to become a nurse, one and a half at TAFE, and two years plus, plus at ACU. But if you want to straight come to the university, you're more than welcome to do so at the completion of you've done your high school year 12. Uh, and uh, or if you've completed another bachelor's degree, but now you look at wanting to change your career, that is something can be done with a, with a strong statement of purpose. You know, advising why that change and, you know, making notes as to why you wish to wish to have the change. So. Uh, the nursing program requires you to have completed uh, a prerequisite degree like uh, like year 12 or a degree program previously. An IELTS score of seven overall with no band less than seven, which is a, a bit of a kick in the gut because this has become a bit of a standard in the last few years. Uh, PTE has also become straightforward. Um, it's overall 65, no grade less than 65 that we need students to gain. 
Um, so it's very important that you either do the ILSPT, you can either do an exam for Cambridge Academic English, CAE, or you can also do TOEFL if, if TOEFL is popular in your country or in your region. Um, that's another area that you could consider doing a TOEFL as well. <clears throat> but obviously IELTS and PT are more accessible and, and more readily available and probably results are out in within the same week. So something that you should consider. Three year nursing program will cost you, will set you back about 30,400 Australian dollars per year. Remember it's about 30,400 Australian dollars per year, but you don't pay per year, you pay only per semester. So you're looking at a fee of 15,700 Australian or 15,200 Australian dollars per semester which I think is still very, very reasonable tuition fee for a highly ranked university and with guaranteed placements. Um, you are expected to take up 800 hours of, of clinical placements as part of the university's uh, no, uh, course curriculum and the course direction. Um, so you will um, start off your, you'll prepare for your um, placements in your first semester, but you'll hit the ground running um, doing your placements actively from your second semester right through to the end, which is in semester number six. Uh, six semesters in total, so you'll be doing placements for at least five semesters, so two and a half years in a row. <clears throat> so um, at the completion of which you should be able to register yourself, and if you passed all your courses and subjects, you should be able to apply for registration with the APRA and the ANMAC, the two registration bodies. Um, APRA is, is perhaps the most popular for international students wanting to apply, uh, to register themselves as a nurse in Australia, and once you get your, your, your standard registration, you will then be able to, you know, um, uh, probably commence working as a nurse in your post-study work visa. Speaking of PSW, post-study work visa, remember, if you have completed a, a bachelor's degree of three years in Australia, you could apply for up to, or a two-year master's degree in Australia, you could apply up to two years post-study work visa. A post-study work visa is, is a grant that the Australian, visa, the Australian government has allowed for the last 10, 11 years where international students can complete their degree and then get um, students to you know to be able to gain some work experience here in Australia. The government re recognizes the fact that they do offer uh, a wonderful work experience for the, for international students, and they 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 try to you know introduce a post study work visa, which has been going on for for so many years seamlessly. There have been very limited changes, um, and, and and students and agents understand the, the the logic and the protocols that students need to follow. Um, and yeah, that that's something that we would love to you know keep for Australia. So hopefully, when you arrive here. And you're doing your nursing and completed PSW will still continue and then you'll be able to you know look for opportunity within Australia in those two years as well. Um, uh, that's something about about the nursing course. Um, you'll have ample contact hours um, as, as we chatted with the world who also mentioned you have classes in the morning and, and you could be ready for an 8 a.m. start and maybe perhaps finish at 8 p.m. Don't be surprised if those days happen. Nursing is not a, 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 a walk in the park. Um, it is, it is, it will require a lot of dedication, a lot of, you know, uh, communication skills. You have to really shine your reading, writing, speaking and listening because a, a good nurse listens, writes the right reports, you know, speaks the right language and, uh, and, you know, understands the issues uh, through, uh, through notes and, and through reading. So you also have to keep, keep upping your, your knowledge because the medical field has grown and is continuing to grow so much. So as a nurse, you might want to, you know, do those reading skills as well. So. Don't think that English is not necessary. It is absolutely the pinnacle of, of a good nurse. Um, and that's something that we will really have to consider. We also have another option called the Bachelor of Nursing, Bachelor of Business Administration. Very popular among domestic Australian students. We do have international students taking up that course as well. Remember, it's a it's a four and four and a half year program. So if you do them individually, then they, they will take you up to six years to complete. But if you do them together, uh, then you're doing it in about four and a half years. So the Bachelor of Nursing, slash Bachelor of Business Administration will give you two degrees. You could, if you find a nursing job, perfect. You could, you know, you could take up a job and, and you know, uh, use the skills of nursing. But if you want to be uh, like a person, like a, uh, if you want to get into a managerial role, you want to get into the hospital administration and management, use your Bachelor of Business Administration skills. So that's something that you could, you could consider. That double degree is also very, very popular for international students. Please note, nursing is not available in July. Each year we only offer that once a year in February, semester one, 2022 and semester one, 2023. If there's anyone making last minute applications, please note Brisbane's the only campus we've got any seats left right now. All the other campuses are super, super full. Uh, for next year, you'll have to plan much, much ahead. If you're looking at 2023, please apply now. I'm not saying this as a marketing ploy. I'm not saying it to you know help Aussies or anything. 
it is a reality. It is very important for you to understand that nursing seats at ACU get taken over 12 months in advance. Uh, uh, sorry to break this, but for a batch of nursing, enrolled nurses, the two year component in Canberra for next year is already full. So, so if you're looking at wanting to move to Canberra for the nursing, enrolled nurses program, if you've done a diploma, wants to move to Canberra, we are full. We don't have any seats left. Um, so that's for next year. We don't even have this year, which has commenced. We already are full for next year. So that's that's something that we all saw. We're like, wow, this is it, it is obviously a very, very popular program. Uh, and you have to be really urgent. We used to tell students to be apply six to eight months in advance. Last year it became we're trying to apply 12 months. Now I'm saying apply 18 months in advance. I know it sounds ridiculous, but you may have to plan your future and apply 18 months in advance to, to get things on the way. That's in, in, in crux a nursing program. I won't talk too much because Dhruva's given a really good understanding of what a pathway, uh, what, what it means to have those uh, placements as well. In a total of three years of the nursing program, you'll have combination of mostly subjects, individual subjects. It could be uh, you'll have uh, areas of uh, all the areas of uh, you know uh, nursing components that have that will be taught. So you, when you finish it, you will have a holistic approach of what a nurse does in a, in a hospital. It could be clinical nursing, it could be geriatrics nursing, it could be nursing for children, nursing for the community, um, understanding different aspects of nursing, and you know understanding the cross-cultural uh, situation we find ourselves in Australia. Uh, at the, at the completion of the nursing program, obviously you can take up the master's courses. We do, we do offer the master of nursing, but not for international students because for it you have to be registered as a nurse in Australia, which can only happen to a, to a student who's completed master's uh, through a bachelor's. Now, if you're a bachelor's student, you will, we would have also looked at your bio permanent migration. So that's that's another area that we'll be uh, looking into. So for the master's course, that's not for international students yet, um, but the bachelor courses is certainly certainly available. Um, moving on from there, I just want to quickly uh, touch base on, on some of the other avenues. If you're not looking at nursing or if you want to look beyond nursing, just to show you what uh, we've got options in nutrition and biomedical science, which also falls under the faculty of health sciences. Uh, and, they, they, and they are uh, quite popular among students who don't want to become nurses or who don't get into nursing. You can also look at, um, look at wanting to be uh, a nutritionist or a, or a biomedical scientist. Uh, it's an evolving industry. It's a it's it's passion for science, and it's obviously a passion for people. So it helps you shape the way we work, we socialize, communicate, and improve. So um, nutrition, biomedical science are some of the other programs that we have off, on offer. We've got the Bachelor of Biomedical Science. We've got the uh, dual degree with public health, business administration, nutritional science, and business administration. A standard biomedical science itself is a three year program and a wonderful, wonderful platform for someone who wants to become a doctor in Australia. If you want to look beyond nursing and want to say, no, I actually want to consider being a doctor, the first step is going to be a three years of biomedical sciences and then perhaps a four years of, of doing an MBBS in a university that offers the medicine degree or the, uh, or it's also called the uh, doctor, of, uh, doctor of Medicine DM program. So that's another program that you could do. Um, externally after completion of uh, biomedical science. We also have, uh, sorry, the nutrition science program, the Bachelor of Nutrition Science. If you want to become a nutritionist, um, that's something that you could consider. Um, and that's, a, that's an amazing area of, that has picked up in the last so many years. People have gotten more health conscious and people have understood the, the value of, uh, of good nutrition, good and, and, and nutrition science. Is, it's not just about, you know, planning someone's diet, but it's also about understanding the needs of, of, uh, of the nutritional value of understanding the needs of the children in, um, in, in very marginal countries as well. So nutrition is also another wonderful area that we offer. I want to touch base on psychology. Now, if you're wanting to become a, a nurse, but your other thoughts you could consider doing, uh, and this is just me trying to give an overall approach of the health programs. Um, psychology as, as well. If you want to become a psychologist, um, you will probably empower others to improve their lives and gain the skills to make a real difference to individuals and the community. I've got a lovely write up here on the screen, so I'm reading it out loud. So psychology is also another wonderful area that you could talk. Um, you're looking at Bachelor of Psychological Science, which is the first three year program, leads into a fourth year of honors, which is a compulsory that you must do at the completion if you want to become a psychologist. And then you have to back it up with a master's of clinical psychology or the master of educational and developmental psychology. Either a clinical or educational developmental psychology will then 
help an applicant or the student become a, a psychologist here in Australia. Remember, you just cannot do a psychology degree and become a psychologist. Uh, you have to have a, a sequence of six years of study. Record broken up is three years of bachelor's degree, one year of honors, and the two years of the master's of clinical or the educational development psychology. So at, the, at that completion, you can go to the PBS, this, uh, uh, the Psychology Bureau of Australia, and then you may apply uh, to the board as a psychologist. And then once you've got the right qualifications, you can do that. ACU's degrees are highly recognized in, psych in the area of psychology with the boards as well. Um, so if you want to explore that area of, of health, you could you know, look beyond uh, the nursing option and look at psychology courses. Very, very popular, especially during pandemic, other than the nurses, is the public health system. Public health and administration have become very, very popular. Uh, a career in public health means improving the well-being of populations, and that's what we've been going through. The World Health Organization, uh, Queensland Health, and New South Wales Health, or the Victoria Health, all the state's health departments, along with doctors and nurses, but mainly with public health professionals, uh, immunologists and virologists. They've all been, you know, um, uh, people who, who understand pandemics. Um, uh, they have been working day and night to you know to look uh, to go past uh, COVID-19. You know we had the Delta variant and now we have the Omicron variant. So you know public health professionals have been at the forefront who understand immunology, who understand disease control, disease prevention. That's an area both at the undergraduate level and at the master's level. So we've got the Bachelor of Applied Public Health along with the Business Administration. That's an option. Or you could do the Masters of Health Administration or the Masters of Leadership and Management in Healthcare. Or you could take up the Masters of Public Health in Global Health and Advocacy as well. Just going back to the Masters of Leadership and Management in Healthcare, if someone's wanting to become, uh, uh, wanting to work in healthcare, but wants to be in the management aspect of things, wants to lead a team, wants to transcend how we deliver health, you know, to, to the larger audience in, 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 you know, probably health companies, they can do the management program. Uh, it's, it's an interesting course for Healthcare and management professionals who don't want to do healthcare anymore, frontline health management, but they want to get into more strategic roles, they could probably get into the Master of Leadership and Management. Of healthcare. <coughs> the Masters of Public Health has become very popular across the markets. We've seen a rise in applications uh, for Master of Public Health. Students want to understand. Uh, uh, clearly, it will be popular for a few years because every, it's it's become the buzzword. You know, public health system, public health professionals. You know, how do we look you know, go through the pandemic? The vaccination drives. All this is being carried out by public health professionals, along with doctors and nurses. So it's very important to understand um, that students have a choice, and you have a choice wanting to study from a public health professional. And lastly, uh, we have the sports and exercise science, which is also part of our faculty of health science. But I wanted to give you an overview of what we do in health. Um, so if you are looking at at uh, at nurse, just look beyond for a second. You can also think of a career in bachelor of exercise in sports science. You can get into high performance sport or physical activity and health science or sports and outdoor education at the undergraduate level. So if you, you can become a, 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 like a sports scientist or sports physiologist, you could get into um, uh, gym training, you can get into coaching, you can get into anything related to sports. You can also do sports administration, sports management with, a, with perhaps a degree in MBA uh, and understand you know, uh, how sports work. And, and remember, sports is a massive area. Uh, and many of the people who work in the industry are also people who have been ex-sportsmen. They get into the administration of the sports uh, because they understand the sports so well and the business aspect of things. But as an outsider, if you have the right degrees and you do work in sport, you can probably, you know, up your career. And Australia is perhaps the best country to do that because it's a sports crazy country and probably Australia plays, plays every sport out there and quite, you know, competitively at, at the highest level. Uh, so that's that's another area that you could consider. There's a postgrad course called the Masters of Clinical exercise physiology, if you want to be an exercise physiologist in the future. And it's highly ranked in the world. Our exercise programs are, are perhaps some of the best. From here, when you arrive at the university, we have ISAs to look after you, the international advisors. There's the Career Development Service, which, which will guide you through jobs while on the, on the campus. If there are questions beyond your placements in nursing or in health courses, the Career Development Service can look at opportunities that might be available in and around the campus. Um, uh, for, for any jobs or any roles that might, or they might help you improve your, your CV. Uh, there's the Student Advocacy Center, there's the Ask AC Center, which is like a main hub for students to go and ask any question they have. Counseling service, disability service, health support and well-being uh, services. We've got the student associations and clubs 
there's a legal ministry, there's a campus ministry. It's a Catholic university. So you've got chapels, you've got multi multi faith uh, prayer rooms as well. So students can access all that uh, while they are the university studying. Step well, the best thing is probably perhaps contact Aussies in your in your city, make an application, um, uh, give them all the documents. They'll assess you against the criteria at ACU. Hopefully you receive an offer letter, you accept your offer, and you will obviously apply for a visa and all that services. I'm hoping that Aussies will be able to you know, take you through. Um, that's something uh, that we can dispense from our end. Um, and if you have to contact us, if you're in Australia, join us in any of our campuses. We can happy to give you a tour. Um, you can contact us or, or your best contact would be Aussies to, to begin with because they will have all the answers. Now, they could be a good bridge between, between the students and the universities. Um, an agent like Aussies will obviously be able to have the most updated information and the tools to you know make an application to you know as you go. Look, really follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube. Follow those channels because these are really active. YouTube, I, I must really say that video I, I got it this morning was from YouTube as well. That is something where there's a lot of resource and a lot of repository of videos that we have, which we share with our students every every uh, I, I do every day. Um, just so that they get an understanding. There's so much social commentary available on social media, which I think students should should join and be part of. Um, Instagram has become very, very popular. Study ACU uh, and gives you a really good insight as to what's happening, all the fun stuff going on. And obviously the Facebook channel is is all about the updates uh, for students. Um, they're, they're regular updates by email, but there are some important updates that go out on Facebook and Instagram as well uh, to join the conversation. But on that note, guys, I would like to say thank you to everyone. Uh, and if there are any questions, Godwin, I'm happy to take them. If there are no questions. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot, Mithun. That that was a very informative session. Uh, yeah, looks like even I should have studied my nursing after listening to this. This was really informative. <laughs> so uh, coming back, uh, there are there are three questions. So the first question is, uh, Masters of Health Administration and Masters of uh, Occupational Health and Safety is available in North Sydney campus of ACU. Sorry, I, I missed that. I dropped out for a second. I'm back in. What was that, Godwin? Oh, yeah. So there are three questions. So uh, the first one is, uh, are Masters of Health Administration and Masters of Occupational Health and Safety available in North Sydney campus of ACU? So we'll take one question. So the question was, uh, what program was it? I'm looking on the, on the website to see what's the latest update. Oh, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> uh, Health Administration and Masters of Occupational Health. So one and a half year program, and we offer that in Sydney campus for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm just pulling up that document as well to ensure I give the absolute updated information. It is uh, uh, one, one and a half year. So there are two courses that we offer at the master's level in the health administration space. Um, one of the ones, the Master of Health Administration, that's that's on your screen. I'll share the screen. I'll actually. So uh, is it a dual masters or a single master program? This is a single master course. Uh, I, okay. If they, if the student is looking at a dual masters program with occupational therapy, I don't think that's available for international students. So it's very important to understand if it's an international student, they they choose the right uh, course. Also remember, ACU offers a lot of other courses that are not op open to international students. It's only available for domestic students. It's also done online. It's also done in, in flexible study mode. So that doesn't really justify offering it to international students, because we, which is why we don't offer them for a lot of international students. So um, what we do have is the Master of Health Administration, 6.5 IELTS, no band less than six, and a one and a half year program. Uh, if a student is looking and wanting to do a two year program, that's when I would guide them towards the Masters of uh, Leadership and Management in Healthcare, because that's an area that's an added six month extra. But we've not really gotten rid of the Masters of Health Administration program, mainly because we've still kept the one and a half year option because there are a lot of domestic students doing that as well. And there could be students from another university after completing 